Like this. But this rotational axis, we don't know where it is, randomly on a plane, on, I mean on a point, a point on this plate. So this part is the rotational axis, or we call it the z axis. Because right now we have three axes, x, y, and z. If we can find a four, fourth axis, then that will be something else. Okay, let's see. Z. This z axis 
its rotational axis, we will always be able to find two more axes. Its perpendicular axis, that is, this x-axis and this y-axis. And of course, we can call this the origin. Then we also have length A. Width B. Mass M. Okay. So let's look at this proof. Now the proof, I have two methods, but only one of them is possible to get one we want. So this I, what is I equal to? Well, this you have to integrate in this area. You can use A, you can use M, but it depends on what you want. What do I mean? A is for the area. Well, M is actually the same, but we can explain it as the parts that have this mass distribution. Then, R squared dm, what is R? Let me show you. We can take a little part out of this place. Then, the distance between this point to the rotational axis or the perpendicular rotational axis. You can also say it's the shortest distance, but that's not the best way of explaining it. The best way is it's perpendicular rotational axis. This is it, the R. But what if I don't want to say that this is a small point? I want to say as something else. And look at this, the M, the small mass. So what I'm saying is that this part is a small mass. And this, what we need to prove, is a continuous mass distribution or an evenly mass, uh, even mass distribution. Well, this mass distribution is distributed evenly. Let's see, what is at this point here? What is this? So when we take it out, I'll just draw it in large form because it's supposed to be very, very, very small. What comes out is a little box. So this box, we're going to call it, this is the x axis, the x, the y axis go according to the dy, like this. But dx times dy is just its area. But what we want is the mass. Then, that means we'll have the mass distribution. Now the mass distribution, how do we get it? Look at this. This is a rectangle, right? Area of a rectangle, what is it? Yes, AB. So it's AB, then that means its mass distribution is M, the total mass, over its area. That means you can write DM as M over AB times DX DY. This gives you one of the methods, but I am not sure whether is it right or whether is it wrong. DXDY, double integration now. R, R squared, what is it? Wait a second, this part isn't it. We can have this. And this, yes, exactly, the Pythagoras theorem. This is 
an X, this is a Y. Speaking about X and Y, what is the X? What is the Y? Let me explain. X, you see, is this part, which is also this part. It's the same. That means this X This point, the distance of this small mass to the y-axis, whether it's at this point or whatever here. Each point, they all have an x, they also have a y. Now, what is that y? This point to the x-axis. Everywhere, both have an x and a y have both this, both of this. So what else? M over AB, then 100 times dx dy. It's like this. Am I right? Okay. Let's pause here for the first method first. How about the second? Let's take a look. First part, they are both common. This part, it gets a little bit different. Still single integration, but we only change this r squared. Now according to our Pythagoras theorem, we have this. So let's see what happens. The next step will be different because the first method, we changed it into double integration. But the second method, we only have a single integration. So let's see. M over AB constant, take it out. We have something like this. Separate them. So we get something like this. Let's see for our second method. It becomes like this. Oh wait, these parts, I can get something. Using the second method, ta-da, we get what we want. First, let me explain about the second method. Y from X squared suddenly become I Y. Y Y squared suddenly become I X. X. This part, right? If it is that part, then it will rotate about the Y axis. When it rotates about this Y axis, it gets I Y. Y. It rotates about the X axis. When it rotates about X axis, it gets I X. That is why. But how about the first? Do you know how to continue? For me, I don't know how. Let me explain to you why I don't know how to continue. Double, double, I need the boundary. If I need a boundary, I need this part. Do you know this part? I don't know, because later I'll explain. How about this part? Do you know? I also don't know about that part. What about this? Do you know? Still, I don't know. Then how about this? Do you know? Of course, I don't know. Let me explain to you why these four parts, I don't know. This rotation axis, did I tell you where is it? No. I only tell you there is this rotation axis, but I never give it a position. I never tell you where it is. Is it on a mass center or is it somewhere else? I never tell you about that. So that's why we don't know. Is this, we can't continue. 
So this first part, only if you can get the well tree, then you will be able to continue. But the second, we don't care about boundaries. We can get it. So it goes something like this. Now, did you realize a very, very, very important word here? Let me underline it. Thin. Now you might ask, why is thin, being thin, so important? Let me show you. What happens if it is not thin? So if it is not thin, what if I tell you? I have this shape. It looks something like a cuboid. But then, this part is all the way like this. What if it is a shape something like this? Okay, so this part is behind. Thin, thick. We don't know. Then yeah, what if? Okay, so this you might say, what if I just use same thickness? Same thickness, hey? Let's say we are at this point. This is the Z. This is the X, this is the Y. I want rotating about the Z. That means it goes like this rotation. Then what if I have a point like this? And then after that, when you find it goes to the Z, Going to the Z. Oh, is that possible? Okay, maybe let's think about something simpler. What do you might say? Okay, never mind. I make it simpler. I don't want according to Z, I want according to Y. Then I have a point all the way up here. Comes down with that Z. Then this is the X. Then we need to find this part. Then that gives us square root x squared plus z squared. Now we have two. It includes in both x and the z. So this is a little bit simpler, but then x and z both inside. Don't know. So that is why it has to be thin, a very thin. Well, you can say it is a plane. Plate, a very thin plate. Okay, let's now take a look at what we need and what we don't care. Very important, just now I explained, it must be thin. Another thing this part, when you find this, the origin, then you can call it, or this. Okay, so that is a rotational axis. When you draw out the x and y, it must be in a plane with this whatever surface you're having because you can have different surfaces. This part is a rectangular surface. They must be in the same plane or you can say coplanar. Co-planner. What kind of word does it make you think of? Well, collinear. Let me explain to you th these means. Collinear. One straight line. One straight line cannot curve. Just straight line. 
co-planner in one plane. This plane can be slanted, but must be one plane. Okay, this collinear can also draw three points in a space. Okay, so this is collinear and coplanar. So you care about its thin, it must be coplanar, these two axes. This rotational axis, it also must be perpendicular to this plane. That is why it's a perpendicular theorem. It must be perpendicular. And also, these two must also be perpendicular. Then, what else? So this is pretty much everything that we need to care about. This mass we also need. Now, what things we don't care? We don't care. These four. Don't need to care about that.